Welcome. I'm talking to you from San Diego, California, home of the 11th Naval District Southern Region. My name is Michael Rios, and I'm an auxiliarist with the United States Coast Guard. My present position is diversity advisor. I work in operations primarily, but I'm also involved in recruiting. In operations, I work uh, going on patrols and search and rescue, crew certified in communications, boat handling, navigation on the waterways. What you'll be viewing today is information about being an auxiliarist with the United States Coast Guard, the auxiliary's activities and their interactions with agencies such as the United States Coast Guard, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, as well as local law enforcement agencies, harbor police, local police departments, sheriffs, fire departments at the local, state, and federal levels. Questions that you may ask or have questions about that will be answered as in hours of obligation, health or age restrictions, what training do you need and what training will be provided to you, and are you required to commit to active duty and travel to foreign countries. And under Homeland Security, as an auxiliarist, are you required to perform in police or law enforcement activities? And finally, as an auxiliarist, what are your benefits? What do you get paid? We're here today at Sector San Diego. Um, uh, now we're called Sector San Diego because this uh, area of operation extends from uh, from Oceanside to the uh, Mexican border. Uh, we also uh, involved Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. So it's a bit large sector um, that uh, that San Diego is uh, responsible for. We also work with District 11, which is Los Angeles um, and Los Angeles County. So we go. Our district goes from Los Angeles all the way down to the Mexican border and um, the four states that I mentioned. So we're a very large component of uh, of, of Southern California, actually. Uh, we all need to remind you that the Coast Guard is also it takes care of inland lakes, any navigable lakes. So if you uh, want to work with um, people in uh, Lake Havasu in our AOR or some of the lakes in, in LA County, we certainly would, uh, would uh, be on those lakes as well. So we have a very large area of operation that, uh, that I think will appeal to most people, whether you're a, a, a saltwater sailor or an inland sailor. Hello, my name is Mike Fulgham. I'm uh, in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Uh, I'm a division captain in Coast Guard Auxiliary Division 1 in Coast Guard uh, District 11, Southern Region. I have five flotilla, uh, flotillas in my division. Um, I wanted to also mention that the uh, uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary is made up of uh, people from all walks of life. Uh, we have uh, civilians who've never served in the military. We also have active duty military people as well as reserve uh, people, and that's both ladies and gentlemen who are involved with this thing. Uh, we have over 30,000 people in the auxiliary that are uh, serving quite a few hours. In fact, a lot of our people um, supported the Katrina hurricane relief effort. Rescue! You want and that they uh, volunteered for FEMA under Coast Guard orders, which uh, really made an impact in the area around Louisiana and Mississippi. I know that uh, three of my people in my division uh, went in as um, uh, FEMA experts and Spanish language interpreters. So we get into everything as far as supporting the reserve or the, the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Coast Guard. What are operations? As a United States Coast Guard Auxiliarist, you could participate in some of these operations. Search and rescue, on water tasks, patrol, dock walker, and vessel safety checks. These are just a few of the operations that would be available to you. Search and rescue is a part of the Coast Guard active duties mission. Uh, we in the Coast Guard Auxiliary assist in that mission by being trained to the same standards as active duty. The boat in the background is one of those boats that we can qualify for uh, crew, uh, to crew on those boats. It's another element where the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Coast Guard active duty work together 
to further the mission of, that the, of the Coast Guard. Being part of the Homeland Security Department, the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard Auxiliary work hand in hand with uh, other government agencies, with policing agencies, firefighters, uh, sheriff departments, uh, the Navy, the Marines. There's not an, another element that we don't work with as part of the Homeland Security Department. Hi there, I'm Andy Anderson. I'm a retired chief from the United States Navy and I'm now in the Auxiliaries at San Diego. I'm a staff officer in Fatoa 1605. And my position is, I'm ops officer. And my, what I do is I assign these vessels and crew, get to make sure the captains and the skippers have their crew and be ready to go out and help the Coast Guard in, in need. Hello there. My name is Jack Swartz. I'm in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. I've been in the Coast Guard Auxiliary for 28 years. Tonight, we're getting ready to go on a patrol, and it's going to be a, a, a patrol slant training evolution where we're going to have two boats, and my boat is going to be the Coast Guard Auxiliary vessel. The other auxiliary vessel will be the uh, boat that breaks down, uh, not for real, but breaks down, and we will be required to take it in a stern tow take it into a side tow, and uh, during that evolution, sometime we will have a man overboard drill where we have an actual human-sized dummy we're gonna throw in, and no, it, it's just a dummy, not one of our members, and uh, we'll have to recover it, and without losing or hurting anybody, complete our tow, take our tow to a dock, tie it up to the dock, and uh, all this is preparing Two people in my crew, one for uh, to be a, a coxswain and the other one to be a crew member. Turn it back down. Do you have anybody injured on board? Is everybody topside? Yes. Have their PFDs on board? Do you have anything hanging in the water? No. On the tow boat, we're going to stop you here and release the tow. That might have passed two. Stand by. Pass number two. Passing two. Back down. Back you down, I. Okay, walk him aft. I've got that. Go ahead. Aft on the port quarter. Port quarter, I. Hi, my name is Mary Davis. I'm with Coast Guard Auxiliary. And I have been in the Coast Guard Auxiliary since 1986. I had been involved with boating most of my life. And some changes happened in my life that allowed me the opportunity to say, what do I want to do next? And I had some friends that were in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. They offered some classes to me. And then my life changed once again. I have now served in the Coast Guard Auxiliary as a coxswain for over 18 years. And as a coxswain, that means that I am the one in command aboard the boat. Standardization is the essence of training, whether that be the vessel or the coxswain. And you too, as a female, can become a coxswain in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. I'm Art Silver. I've been a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary for more than 15 years and have occupied a variety of positions uh, from flotilla commander on to uh, uh, district uh, positions. I'm a retired cardiothoracic uh, surgeon. Currently, I'm serving as a Coast Guard uh, qualified uh, coxswain, which means that the Coast Guard trained me in procedures necessary uh, for boat handling and to carry out Coast Guard missions such as search and rescue and uh, patrols. As a coxswain, uh, I take command of my own boat and uh, also receive orders from the Coast Guard uh, in order to carry out these patrols. My name is Vlad Tovbin. I'm a coxswain with the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. Uh, my uh, primary mission is surface operations. Uh, I'm with uh, Division 1, Flotilla 04. 
I mainly participate in uh, safety and security patrols uh, in San Diego Harbor. What I enjoy most about uh, uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary is to be able to work alongside uh, active duty Coast Guard as well as other law enforcement agencies and uh, do uh, uh, safety and security uh, missions uh, in, in the uh, San Diego port. Um, I also enjoy the fact uh, that we are treated as, as equals uh, by the active duty Coast Guard and uh, we work side by side with them. The United States Coast Guard Auxiliary will conduct an authorized official vessel safety check. The vessel safety check is requested by the vessel owner operator. The vessel examiner will give emphasis to the educational opportunity and maximize the awareness, potentials for water safety survival, and boating enjoyment satisfaction. Pleased to meet you, Larry. Can I ask you to do a couple of things before, uh, before I come on board? Yes, uh, what, would you, what do you need? What I'd like you to do is go down below, and I want you to get uh, your uh, personal flotation devices, your okay. visual distress signals, All right. uh, your fire extinguishers. Okay, my fire extinguishers are already mounted outside. So. OK, fine. Uh, we'll take a look at them then. Uh, and when you're down below, uh, you're bring up the sound producing devices as well and turn on the nav lights. Okay. And I'll be checking the external part of your vessel and I'll be right back. Okay, sounds Thanks. good. May I come aboard? Yes, you may. Thank you. Okay, you can turn off the uh, nav lights if you wish. Okay, I sure will. And come on back up here and we'll start this process. Okay. Okay, here's your paperwork. Okay. What's the length of your vessel? 26. Okay. Gas or diesel? Gas? Gas. Gas. Is this your first time with a, your uh, inspection? Yes, it is. I see. Okay, it good. Is the first time you I know about the, the, uh, the, uh, the safety classes that we have that are available for free? I sure don't. Would you tell me about it? I certainly will. I'm going to write a, a, a name and number up here and you give them a call and they'll get you enrolled right away. They're free. Sounds good. Yeah, it is. It is great. In this section, you will learn about some of the education and training opportunities that are available to you from the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. Good morning. My name is Dennis Ussery and I'm a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary. I'm uh, a member of Flotilla 16-5, which is uh, headquartered in Coronado, California, but as you can see, we are located as part of the sector San Diego. Uh, my responsibility is to track the training for these individuals to make sure that they are first initially qualified, they get all the training they need to uh, get the qualification, and then periodically they get requalified. I think one of the best things about the Coast Guard uh, that I've found since I've been in are the training opportunities that are available. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is our safe boating class we're going to have tonight and it's going to be eight weeks long you're going to do two hours a night one night a week on wednesdays my name is jack swartz and i'm in the coast guard auxiliary and i'm here to teach you safe boating these are all buoys coming in notice they're in pairs here but it makes the corner and they start staggering all over the place anybody can tell me where the what the what the phrase we use to remember what the buoys how they're marked when you come in Red, right, returning. Red buoys are on your right side when you're returning from sea. Tonight I'd like to show you the bowline. The bowline is the most important knot to a boater because it does a, a multitude of jobs. Hello, I'm Jim Davos of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. I'm here in one of the West Marine stores in San Diego, California. I'm here in the radio section. Uh, these are all called VHF marine radios. Uh, every recreation boat should have one. You don't have to have one, but it would be a good idea if you had one for safety. All VHF marine radios being sold in the United States today ha have to have a digital select calling on them. How do you know if they have digital select calling on them? By the flap. That is except for the handheld ones, but some handheld ones, as this one here has, has the flap on it. That's how you identify them as having a, a digital select 
calling on them. In order to activate this, you must register the boat. Think about safety, 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 and we can't find you if we don't know you're broke down. Hello, I'm Joan Swartz. I am the public education officer for Flotilla 16-5. My job has been teaching navigation, and this truly is an important safety factor. If the navigator knows what he's doing, he can get the boat and all its contents safely to where it needs to go. Get your chart so that you can come all the way down the your sound. Then move your, move your um, instrument all the way down to the compass rows. You want to total up from my name is Kelly Hairgrove. I joined the auxiliary about three years ago. I uh, was initially brought in uh, and became secretary of our flotilla. Since then, I've done numerous things. Since that time, I have had numerous training classes, education, and I've been able to meet some wonderful people who have actually become mentors for me. The Safety Seal is the educational mascot for the youth program, introducing youth to safe boating on the water. Let us bring Mr. Safety Seal out. Hey, Safety. I'd like to answer some questions that will help you with your decision about becoming a United States Coast Guard Auxiliarist. Hours of obligation. You can spend one to two hours a week or as much time as you have to participate. You will be encouraged to attend a monthly meeting. Health restrictions. There are no health restrictions as long as you're able to perform mentally or physically in the assignments that you can participate in. Education and training will be provided to you in the areas of administration, vessel safety checks, communication, dock walkers, navigation, weather identification, patrols, search and rescue, and public education. Are you required to serve your country on active duty? such as in police, security, law enforcement, or active military. Under Homeland Security, as a volunteer, the answer to this question is no. As an auxiliarist, what are your benefits? Even though, as an auxiliarist, you don't get paid money, you get invaluable training and knowledge in many disciplines, as in navigation, communications, administration, as in dock walkers, vessel examinations, weather identification, boat safety and seamanship, crew, boat handling as in coxswain, and search and rescue to name a few. On base privileges, while on assignments, health and medical care, you get to meet some interesting people, you can make some lasting friendships, and being a United States Coast Guard Auxiliarist, you can achieve self-satisfaction, pride, in giving to your community and your country. My name is Lee Davis, and I have been a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary for 27 years. Why? Because I love it. I am the uh, flotilla staff officer, personal services. What does that mean? It means that I go out and recruit people to come into the uh, auxiliary. So my job is to find qualified people, people who have an interest in boating and, and in the water, and bring them into the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Hi, my name is Paul Scanlon. I'm the flotilla staff officer for recruiting for 1605 here in San Diego. I'd like the opportunity to go and talk with you about recruiting and retention. And in addition to my staff officer responsibilities in the local level, I am the national staff officer for recruiting uh, for the national uh, staff for the Pacific area, which includes California, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, and Guam. We have uh, approximately 7,042 members in the uh, Pacific area. In the San Diego area, we have uh, 13 flotillas and 435 uh, active members. Uh, we are constantly looking for additional membership. If you have an interest in joining us, please give one of us a call. 
We are in the yellow pages. You can go and look under uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary and find us, or any of the marinas um, ha normally have a, a posting, or any of the boat stores. Uh, we certainly uh, could use uh, any kind of help, be it administrative or be it on, on the water. Uh, we can go and use uh, anybody with any kind of uh, experience. So Bob, thank you for even um, considering having a joint meeting with us. As you know, I came on to 1604 this year to try to help get some new membership in there and get some new blood in. We're, we're an awfully small flotilla. We're only at about 19 right now. What caused you to decide to become the flotilla commander? Well, I certainly think that um, from the flotilla commander side, when, when I joined the auxiliary, I put out there that anything that I was asked to do, I would do that I was here for the greater good and to put some assistance into um, giving back to my country and giving back to the, the Coast Guard. So when you kind of put that out there, you certainly, um, when, when challenges come up and, and assistance is needed, it's hard to say no if you've put out there that you'll do whatever it takes. What made you decide to jump down it? <laughs> yeah. I kind of got, it was kind of an interesting experience for me. I, I joined the, the, the uh, auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I love being on the water. And uh, we were interviewed uh, some time ago by a, a local newspaper, and one of the things that she quoted me as saying is that I, and I did say this, uh, of all of the things that we do to support the, the Coast Guard, and I like the professionalism that the, that the auxiliary teaches, I like the way we go about our business, I like being on the water and accomplishing something, not just steaming around and mm -hmm. having fun. But I said to her, that if it weren't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. You've heard from numerous people about the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary and how it functions and interacts with other agencies. There are a variety of job assignments that you can volunteer for, such as public education and teaching, support of boat and vessel shows, vessel inspections, dock walkers, communications, patrols of inland lakes, rivers, bays, harbors in the ocean, air observation, search and rescue, procedures, administration, navigation, as well as recruiting. If you have the time, if you have the interest, you can spend as little or as much time you have to participate. Please help yourself and others in your community. Thank you. If you have an interest in becoming a United States Coast Guard Auxiliarist, more information can be found at www.cg AUX1605.org